Hello everybody, it's David from Langflow, and today I'd like to dig into using evals in Langsmith. Um, so if you're not familiar with evals, they are an important step in your LLM and agentic journey, uh, especially as say you are deploying applications, maybe testing multiple LLMs, um, maybe you have an automatic deploy in a CI CD pipeline and you want to ensure that your LLMs and agents are doing what you expect, right? That's where evals really come into play. Now, what's super cool is that Langsmith does in fact offer a full UI that you can use. Um, we should go ahead and take a look at it here. Here we go. You see it up on the right-hand side of my screen. So you can see um, in the Langsmith UI, I've got some tracing projects, some evals that I've done in the past. You can create all of your data sets and your evaluators and everything programmatically. And then they will just show up here in the UI so you can start uh, visualizing what's going on. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at some code and the setup here. Um, so per the Langsmith documentation, they do support both Python and TypeScript. So I'm going to focus on Python today, um, but you'll notice that in this GitHub repository that is right here, right? I have both Python and TypeScript fully implemented. Now let's take a look at the setup. If I come back over to, um, uh, to Langsmith here, and if we go to say, we'll open this up, I'll go to this tracing projects and you can get this new project. And again, everything I'm doing here is in the Langsmith documentation. Now, when I do this, there are two key things that you need. One, you want to generate that API key. And then two, you see that give you this nice uh, output of all the environment variables that you need. Um, so you're going to pull these out and you're going to put them in your code in your .env file. The other key thing is the project name. By the way, this can be just about anything. Right. This is whatever you want to call your project. Now, what's cool is you're not limited to the value that you put here. As a matter of fact, as I've learned, as long as you have the API key, whatever you put in your environment variable, whatever you set your project name programmatically is going to be what shows up in the Langsmith UI. So really what it comes down to, you need the API key, obviously install your dependencies, give it a project name, pull these environment variables out and you're pretty much set to go. OK, so let's go ahead and go back over to the code. Now, if we take a look at my.env file, um, you'll see that's exactly what I've got. All four of these came right out of the information I got there um, in the Langsmith UI. I've called my project evals in Langflow, and that is what we should see show up in the Langsmith UI. Now, for my particular agentic platform, I am, in fact, using Langfo. That is what you see here on the right hand side. Um, one of the neat features here, I have I can choose from all sorts of different model providers, all sorts of models. And you're going to see where this comes into play in a moment, because in the particular case that I've implemented here, I'm going to iterate through a bunch of different providers and their models. And I want to be able to easily iterate through those things. And that's where Langfo really comes into play. OK, great. So let's go ahead now in this particular project, um, the way that I've broken things up is I like to make things clean with a nice config.py or just like a config class where I kind of put all of the things that I'm going to need globally throughout my whole application. Um, so you see, this is where I'm loading all my environment variables. But the key thing here is my LS client or my Langsmith client, right? This is coming right out of the Langsmith documentation. You can see the package here. I'm just initializing this client. Um, this is the one that I'm going to share around uh, throughout the various parts of the app. And then I mentioned this earlier, this OpenAI client. Now you might ask yourself, well, wait a minute, if your agentic workflow is over here on the right and you're using Langflow for that, why do you have an OpenAI client here in the code? And what's going on is when we go to set up um, the LLM as a judge evaluators, I need an external LLM that is going to judge the responses from the LLMs that I'm using in Langflow, right? That's what this is all about. And then finally, if we scroll down here, you'll see this, this global that I have, this models to test. Um, so in my particular case, what I'm looking to do is for my data set, I want to evaluate against GPT-41, 41 Mini, 4.1 Nano, and also bring in Claude 3.7. So I'm going to use this particular array to go ahead and iterate through. And you'll see this all come together uh, at the end when we go to execute. OK, great. So the next thing I need from an evaluation standpoint is something to evaluate against my data set. Now, notice here that I'm creating this 
programmatically, right? I'm defining this examples data set. And these are just some simple questions that I literally pulled out right out of the LangSmith documentation, right? So things like, you know, asking the agents here, you know, how do you define a function in Python and then giving it what I deem is the correct answer. In your particular case, let's say you have some type of chatbot ad or something like that, um, you would probably want to take mine questions, um, important, maybe technical questions, things like that from your own data set. And then those are the types of things you want to test here, right? Um, there are so many examples in the Langsmith docs. So I would say, take a look at those and see what fits. Now, something important here is that I'm defining these programmatically, but you don't have to, right? If you come back over to the uh, to the Langsmith UI, you could create a data set here in the UI. As a matter of fact, everything we're just about to do, you could do in the UI. Um, so I think it really comes down to comfort level style um, and, you know, whether or not you want to generate things programmatically. Um, I, for one, especially if I'm doing things from like a CI CD pipeline and it's automated, I like to do them programmatically. That way I'm not reliant on something being in the UI that may or may not be there. I know my code will execute and it'll be able to run those every time. That's exactly what we're going to do right now. Okay, great. So I define this data set and then finally my judges, right? So when I'm performing my evaluations, I want to evaluate against some criteria. So in this case, I'm going to look for helpfulness. How helpful is the response? Um, this might be useful for a chatbot scenario and concision. How concise is the response? Now, are you limited to these two things? Not at all, right? You can write whatever functions you want here and you're really kind of setting them up like a normal prompt. Like if you notice this here, right? It says you are grading the helpfulness of the following response on a scale of one to five. Um, notice too, this is where we're using that external open AI model as a judge, right? Totally separate from my actual agentic flows. Okay, so I've defined some functions I'm going to use as an evaluator. And now let's put these together. Right. So if we come to my main, you can see I'm bringing in config data set and judge. If we um, scroll all the way down to where we execute this thing right here. OK, as we come down to the bottom of main here, um, you can see I'm making this call to my Langsmith client dot evaluate function. Um, and then we just need to pass a couple parameters to this. One is the target function, right? This is going to be the thing, the function that is responsible for making your LLM or Agentic call. In my case, it is Langflow. It could be whatever Agentic platform you're using or an LLM call. Um, you can see this very clearly, by the way, in the Langsmith documentation. Um, so this, this part is really up to you. Um, and then the data here is going to be our data set, right? It's the data set we talked about earlier. I'm just going to pass that in. The same thing with those evaluators. So um, the structure of my concision and helpfulness functions come directly out of what is the, what Langsmith expects, right? You need to have them structured a certain way. You just pass them through as a list of evaluator functions. And then finally, something is optional, but I think really important, having some metadata. I just filled out your basic LLM provider and model. That'll actually help fill out some of the data we run our evals. Um, and then this experiment prefix, this one's really important uh, because this is going to be the thing that names every one of your experiment. Like when you, when you look at them, when you look at the run, you're going to see in my case, uh, the link, the link flow endpoint name I'm using, but also the model provider and the model name. You'll see that here in a moment. Now, one final thing I do want to point out here. If I scroll up, I mentioned a moment ago, the target function in this case, I'm going to call link flow, but the key thing I really want to point out is this at traceable, right? This is a really important annotation. Um, you add this in and then Langsmith will automatically trace your target function. So that's super cool. Gives you a lot of nice functionality in the Langsmith UI. All right, so let's go ahead and do a run. So I mentioned before that I was gonna clear everything out here and then we're gonna generate everything programmatically, right? This is more along the lines of what I might do in like a CI CD pipeline or something where I don't wanna rely on things being in the UI. Um, so let's go ahead and run this. It's first gonna do a check for the data set. It's gonna go, ah, look, I didn't find the data set, so I'm gonna go ahead and create it, right? And as we watch over here, we should see that magically appear and then it's gonna start those evals. So here's our data set that just got created from our code. And then you can see it's already running through these various evaluations. And while it's doing that, if I come to examples, 
these are the same questions that were in the data sets that we created in our Python, right? Um, so again, you can do this programmatically or you can do it through the UI, really kind of up to you. Okay, so we can see they're running a set of experiments and it's almost there, it's doing the Anthropic one now. And what's super cool about this as, you know, as we get these runs, we're getting this data. Um, and again, remember, I defined both the concision and helpfulness evaluators here. Um, so that will run against every one of these uh, particular experiments. And let's go ahead and reload that real fast. So I get these nice charts. I can see across the board that my concision is good. Like all of the models seem to perform the same way. Uh, helpfulness has a slight variation. Now, if you take a look at what we've done here, remember I was iterating over GPT-41, 41 Mini, 41 Nano, and Claude 37 Sonnet. So now we can very clearly see the differences in the output. I can see that Nano, right, from a performance standpoint, is actually the fastest, but it's not as helpful as some of the other ones, right? Now, whether or not this matters for you and, you know, you can add in all sorts of other criteria, it really depends on your particular case. Um, now, for each of these, you do get, again, you get these scores. These are scores that you have defined. Um, you can see some latency and everything like that. And then you can actually look into these. So now I can get a little bit more detailed information on some of the information that's in these. Um, I can look at the experiments themselves. Again, I can look at the scores. I can look at the latency. Uh, all sorts of things come into play. This seemed pretty straightforward. And it is. And if I was trying to, say, compare models or something like that uh, for my particular set, if I saw data like this, it's not that far off. I may not use Nano if it was a chatbot. I probably want it to be more helpful. But here, let me introduce something. We're going to come back over to my config, and I'm going to cause an error. And we're going to do another set of iterations over these experiments. So to me, this is a case from like a CICD pipeline where this might be really important because let's say that you did something, um, maybe there was an error introduced into code or there was a change to a model name or something like that, and your testing didn't quite catch it. These evals very well may. Um, so I think it's a really important point or a part of uh, building applications now with uh, with AI. All right, let's see what happens. So we can see that our run so far looks pretty normal. I'm seeing the same kind of results I did before. Uh-oh, but I knew that I made an error, right? Now, I know that in my logs, but let's see what happens. Now, I don't know about you, but if I had, say, an automated pipeline that was running when I deployed my app and all of a sudden I saw a concision score and a health and a score, whatever, drop off in the way that they did, and I'm not seeing some of the other information that maybe I would um, expect, that might be a cause for me to go look deeper, right? And in this particular case, I know definitely that it has aired out because I purposely invalidated the name of the model. Um, so I think this is a really great case of something, once you kind of have an established pattern, if you see some deviation, it might be time to go uh, take a look. And there you have it, just a basic primer on how to do evals in Langsmith. Again, I thought the documentation was pretty solid. The quick start and the tutorials were pretty darn easy to follow. Um, and they have both examples in Python and TypeScript. Again, if you take a look at the GitHub repo, I've got these implemented for you. You can just plug in your information and go. And with that, everybody, as usual, happy coding. Take care.